Hi, Paul Zimmer from Dance Demos here. This video is about how I record cues. And the reason I'm doing this is because when I started on my cueing journey, I asked a lot of people about how to do this, and I got a lot of different answers, and I got the impression that a lot of people do it the way they do it only because it's the only way they know how. So I thought I would document what I ended up with as, as my preferred system, and that way other people can learn from what I learned, and also people may have input that will improve my arrangement. So here we go. So what I do is I, I do something that's entirely Audacity centric. Audacity is a free audio editing program most people know about. You can just download it and install it. Um, I load the music into Audacity, then I play the music from Audacity, and I record the cues into Audacity from a USB microphone at the same time. It's called overdubbing, and it's a built-in feature of Audacity. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages of that arrangement. I'll talk about it at the end, but that's the basic idea. So. The equipment, of course, you need Audacity. I use a USB plug-in mic, so when I first started experimenting with this, I tried using my cueing mic, an Electro Voice ND76S, through a mixer, and I compared it to the results I got from my cheap podcast-style USB mic that I use for overdubbing of lots of these videos, and I couldn't hear the difference. So I went back, I went with the podcast mic, and it looks like this. That's the one that I have, so you can see it's not very expensive. Um, I keep that more or less permanently installed next to the computer on one of these, on a swing arm. Um, this one's currently unavailable, but they're they're pretty common. You can find them on Amazon. Um, if you're really attached to your cueing microphone, people use this device. You plug your cueing microphone into it, and it plugs the other end plugs into USB, and it looks like a USB microphone to the computer. Um, the other piece of equipment is that a pair of cheap wired headphones plugged into the computer. Um, you want to be careful not to use Bluetooth because Bluetooth has a lot of latency delay so what can happen is that the delay of getting the sound from audacity to your headphones plus the delay of you speaking into it can produce potentially a noticeable delay between when you thought you said the cue and when it actually arrives in the final output so i recommend against that use cheap wired headphones okay that's the basic idea now i'm going to walk you through it step by step so first we got to prepare the music so we'll do file import audio so I'm gonna go down here and grab too early to say goodnight because that's one of my favorites these days and you see it pulls it in in quote-unquote stereo but it, the two channels are exactly the same so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce that to to just mono so I go tracks mix mix stereo down to mono and then I'm going to go over here and shove it all the way to the left because I want the music to come out in the left channel. Now, um, what I like to do, you can adjust the volume with this slider, but I like to get it in the ballpark. So I'll show you how I do that. I double click on this to select it all, and then I go to Effects, Volume and Compression, Amplify, and then pick a number, say minus 2 dB, boom, and it does it. And while we're at it, I'll also show you how to adjust the, the tempo. So suppose that you're doing something and the cue sheet recommends running 44 RPM so what you do is you once again double click that you go to effects pitch and tempo change tempo and then you can enter I did the math 44 divided by 45 is minus 2% so you apply minus 2% um, normally I apply it with a high quality switch turned on um, but you can get a fast estimate of what it's going to sound like by turning it off and like counting the beats per minute or whatever. I'm going to turn it off for our purposes here just to speed things up. So uh, I got the next thing I want to do is use this button to go to the beginning and then I'm going to zoom down tight on it and I'm going to slide it over to where I want the music to start. So I usually start at two, people start at five, whatever you want to do. So now we are finally ready to record. So I'll do this to go back to the beginning again. And then I hit on the keyboard Shift R. And it starts recording. How does it go? It goes sway left and right, roll through checking, blah, 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 blah. So I'm queuing along as it goes. And when I'm all done and the music's over with, I click the big black button. So there's my cue track. I slide that all the way over to the right and I clean it up. So I go to the end here after I said the last cue, 
select that part and I hit the delete button on my keyboard and I quiet the beginning because very often you know say that's my first cue I'll select use the mouse to select from the first cue over and I do control L on my keyboard and that silences it now there's one more thing well, first of all oh yeah make sure that that's that's unmuted because sometimes for some reason I've never been able to figure out it record it records and leaves it muted so make sure it's unmuted um, one more thing I'm going to do before I uh, output it is I like to get it roughly balanced and the way I do that is I go over to the to the Windows flag here and I type in mono turn mono audio on or off and I'll turn it on and then I'll go to the beginning here and I'll start playing and now I can use these volume sliders to, to adjust the cues sway left and right checking, blah, blah. so I adjust the cue to music balance get it reasonably close so that I don't have to fiddle with it too much when I'm actually in the hall we're finally I think ready to export it so I do by the way if you use the same laptop be sure to turn that off because if that's on when you go to use the laptop in the hall confusing things happen okay so I got the music on the left I got the cues on the right oh by the way I'm going to show you my actual audio setup so you see how it ended up that way so this these are the individual things I can change but I'm going to show you what the whole setup is I should have done that at the beginning so I'm using MME um, if you use Wasapi, that allows you to record. You can't use the microphone, but you can record whatever's playing. That would be subject to a future video. I'm, I'm outputting to the speakers, which goes to my microphone, sorry, to my headset. And then I'm using my USB microphone. So that's the setup. Oh, this is important too. So I want that set to mono because you'll see what happened when I recorded is I got a single mono track. If I have that to stereo, I get two identical tracks and then I have to compress it down to mono and delete one of them and all that kind of stuff so I just set it to mono to begin with I get a mono recording track okay now we're ready to finally export so I do file export export as mp3 so I'm gonna give the file the name too early to say goodnight for example and what I do is I do control A control C because I'm gonna need that in a minute okay that's my file name off we go now it invites me to enter all the metadata so what I do is I have a bunch of templates ready and I'll show you how I create them in a minute so I'm gonna go into this templates file and it's a Foxtrot so I'm gonna pull in my Foxtrot template and then we go in here and change the name and now I'm ready to go now the way the template is created by the way is you go to this little template box and you say once you've got got it set up the way you want you say save and you pick a file location and name and you save it there okay so now off we go and it creates my my mp3 file with music on the left and cues on the right so we'll talk a little bit about advantages and disadvantages of this so biggest advantage no cables no need to take out the mixer um, I want to have an inexpensive permanent setup because I want to make recording cues easy and I want to make it easy for you too because as a student I prefer recorded cues so I wish people would do this more and I think part of the problem is the setup for a lot of people is so clumsy and so hard to do that they can't be bothered another advantage is I don't have to resync the voice cues so the way a lot of people do this is they play the music out of the queuing software and then they queue into the the microphone and then when they're done all that's in audacity is the voice cues alone so they then take the voice cues into the queuing software as a separate file and have then they have to resync them inside the queuing software this avoids all of that it's then all set up in one single mp3 file of course the disadvantage is you can't use karaoke mode because I'm not using the queuing software to supply the the music I'm using I'm using what's in audacity but as there are no distractions when I'm doing this it's not really I don't I'm not likely to lose my place there's a advantage to this that I'll get into in a future video which is it's easy when you do this to stop and restart because the music is right there so all I have to do is delete the part that I where I bobbled the cue 
back up a few measures so that I can find the, the timing again and hit shift R again and start recording from where I left off. And then I merge it together. That'll be in another, in another video. Um, th one disadvantage is there is some latency in this flow, right? The, the music's got to get out into my headphones and then it's got the voice cues have to get back through the microphone, but I measured it on my setup and it's 13 milliseconds. So for scale at 120 beats per minute, each beat is 500 milliseconds. So 13 milliseconds is pretty much undetectable. So there you have it. That's the way I do it. And if you have a better way to do it, by all means, let me know. Uh, contact me on dancedemos at gmail.com and let me know what you've come up with. Thanks for listening.